Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Christina remained silent in Blaze's suite, while Blaze informed Natalia that Christina was more than just a friend. She's my girlfriend? Blaze clarified. Blaze inquired as to whether Natalia's mother had heard her when she stayed silent. Immediately after, Natalia attempted to divert the conversation by criticizing Blaze for having a disorganized suite and criticizing Blaze for becoming arrogant due to her expectation that others would clean up after her. Natalia started to clean up, but Blaze informed her mother that she only needed her mother to listen to her, not for Natalia to clean up after her. While reminding Blaze that Christina had always supported him, Natalia also accused Christina of feeding Blaze's imagination and ridiculous ideas. Blaze emphasized that she was an adult and had spent years working in a demanding field. Blaze told her mother she was appreciative of Natalia's support for her music career, but she also wanted Natalia to know the real Blaze. Blaze requested Christina to stay, but Christina chose to allow Blaze and Natalia some privacy. Blaze made it plain that she valued Christina and that their connection came first, reminding Blaze that she had made a financial investment in his profession. Natalia acknowledged that she was worried about the concentration of both Blaze and Brooklyn. Natalia brought up the fact that Blaze hadn't written the song she had promised to write, which made Blaze become defensive. Blaze maintained that Christina was an inspiration, despite Natalia's suggestion that she had been a diversion. Natalia wasn't convinced because Blaze wasn't the psalm's author. Natalia felt that Blaze's outcry of displeasure at her refusal to be heard was her cue to depart, as she felt awkward speaking in front of Christina. Reaching for her suitcase, Natalia made her way to the door. Natalia left, despite Blaze's pleas to her mother not to cut her off. Christina consoled Blaze later, but Blaze said she wasn't shocked by her mother's response because it had happened before. Blaze noted that even finding a woman in her bed hadn't opened her mother's eyes, which Blaze considered surprising as Natalia had no issues with any of her homosexual friends and co-workers. Christina agreed that Natalia's denial had appeared, practiced. Given that Blaze was her daughter, Christina surmised that Natalia could be more concerned for Blaze. Blaze wanted to have an honest conversation with her mother, but it was challenging because Natalia built barriers. Blaze clarified that her family was the most important thing to her and that she had made an effort to please her mother. Christina could relate, particularly because the GLOW did indeed have difficulties. I guess for my mom, I'm one of them, Blaze remarked. Blaze doubted that she and Natalia would eventually reach a better place, but Christina was positive. Since Christina had already dealt with coming out, Blaze gave her the option to leave. Christina then inquired as to whether Blaze regretted calling Christina her girlfriend. Christina told Blaze that Natalia might never change, even though Blaze assured her she would never regret it because it was the first time in a long time that she felt free. Blaze concurred, yet she desired for Natalia to realize the significance of her bond with Christina. Blaze was cautioned by Christina that nothing is guaranteed, not even for them but she urged him to persist in trying with Natalia. Christina changed course since she needed to get to a foundation meeting. Blaze grinned and said that being with Christina was the reason she was happy. Blaze's smile disappeared as they kissed and Christina turned to leave. Maxie accepted that she and Spinelli had kissed in her place, but she recommended that they act as though it had never happened. She told him that she had enjoyed the kiss allaying Spinelli's concerns. With a sense of relief, Spinelli acknowledged that he would never be able to return to the previous state of affairs. I think I'm falling back in love with you, Maxie, Spinelli said. In an instant, he made it clear that it went beyond that. He was in love. Spinelli acknowledged that he had always had feelings for Maxie, but she warned him against changing the past. Spinelli acknowledged that he had sublimated his affections for her before but that had all changed over Christmas. He claimed that his feelings for her had never been greater. Spinelli inquired as to Maxie's thoughts. 
Admitting that she felt the same way about him, she questioned whether love was sufficient to keep them together given that it hadn't worked in the past. She accepted that fate had brought them together when Spinelli's pipes burst, and he moved in, despite his assurances that they were meant to be together. As he had to inform Maxie that fate had nothing to do with it, Spinelli's smile dimmed. He acknowledged that he had lied to her without raising any red flags in order to assist her with her expenditures. When Maxie learned that Felicia had told Spinelli about her financial difficulties, she became enraged and felt that Spinelli was assuming that she was incapable of providing for her children and herself. Maxie fiercely declared, True love had nothing to do with this. Maxie reminded Spinelli that she had heard the same justifications from Austin Gatlin Holt and Peter August, so he hurried to reassure her that he had behaved out of love. Maxie disagreed with Spinelli's claim that he wasn't like Peter and Austin because he had lied to her and moved in under false pretenses. She expressed her disappointment that Spinelli, of all people, didn't see that there were no levels of trust and clarified that she needed to have complete faith in the person she committed her heart to. Maxie was reassured by Spinelli that his intention was purely helpful. Maxie pointed out that she was no longer the wild and crazy Maxie that he had always bailed out of, so he apologized, but reminded her that everything had worked out in the end since they had experienced the old familiar feelings. Maxie informed Spinelli that she was an adult now, capable of caring for her kids and herself just fine. Maxie wasn't interested in his flattery, but Spinelli told her that he didn't view her as a vulnerable person. He said that she was still as interesting and unpredictable as ever, but living with her had given him the chance to witness the new and improved Maximista. He clarified that all he had meant to do was slightly improve her quality of life. Maxie gave Spinelli the order to pack up and go when he pleaded to give them a chance. Spinelli was shocked, but Maxie didn't waver in her choice. While he had intended to assist without making Maxie feel obligated to him, Spinelli reassured her that his intentions had been good. Well, I'm feeling furious and played, but not indebted, so job well done, Maxie replied. Choosing to send his belongings to him, she assured him he could visit Georgie any time he wanted as she guided him to the door. Maxie seemed to rethink her mind when Spinelli left. But when she shouted out to Spinelli and opened the door, he was gone. Carly questioned Drew about his day at Bobby's, telling her he'd been carrying a large bag for some time. Carly acknowledged that she had not had the best day either. Drew admitted that he had despised the way things had ended between them but he had no idea how to make it right. He questioned whether they would be able to go on. He questioned, Or is this the end for us? Carly admitted that she had said unintentional things to him, but she also made the point that Drew had changed since coming back from Pentonville. Drew cautioned Carly that he didn't really know the man he was anymore, and that the man he'd been was permanently gone. Sounds interesting. Drew responded to Carly's insistence that the Drew Kane she'd fallen in love with was a good, caring, humorous, and sweet man. Carly changed the subject by telling Drew that Willow and Scout were among the many people who loved him. She told Drew he was a fine guy and a hero, but she begged him to forget Pentonville. Though he couldn't let go of what Nina had done to him, Drew told Carly he would love to. Although Carly acknowledged that she too detested Nina, she was concerned that their relationship would fail if he was unable to let go of his animosity toward her. Carly clarified that she had taken the job at Crimson for Drew, despite Drew's criticism that she had done so in order to get revenge on Nina. While she acknowledged that it had been fun to surprise Nina, she had no desire to pursue her further. Though her mother had known better than to seek retribution or give in to her worst desires, Carly reminded him that Bobby's had been named after a woman who had given as good as she had received. Rather, Carly was making every effort to rise beyond them, just as Bobby had done. Drew needed to see the Drew Kane she knew, Carly said, putting a gentle hand over his heart and warning him that if he didn't, Nina would prevail. She informed him that the animals that had attacked him were imprisoned and that he was free. 
Although Drew acknowledged that Carly was correct, he acknowledged that there were moments when he thought he was still in Pentonville. He admitted that he would stop at nothing to get over his feelings of hate for Nana, but it was difficult when she kept getting back up on her feet, as seen by her hiring as the Invader's publisher. Carly told Drew that although she was tired of letting Nana ruin her life, it wasn't easy for her to move on either, just thinking about Nina raised hair on the back of her neck. Carrie said that losing Bobby had shown her how fleeting life was, and as a result, she had decided not to waste any more time settling scores. Carly reassured Drew that he was not alone in hating Nina since she would never forgive Nina for what Nina had done to Carly's family, even if Drew vowed he would never take a second of their time together for granted. Carly acknowledged that she could never trust anything Nina said. If she walked in and said, Good morning. I'd be looking for the meteor to hit, remarked Carly. Drew felt relieved since he had believed he was the only one who had recognized Nina's danger. Carly informed Drew that Nina posed a threat to her own well-being. Carly maintained that she and Drew were the only things that mattered. Drew thought that sounded good, and he smiled. Carly informed him she had thoughts about how they may get back together after he questioned her in a seductive way. Carly and Drew went back to her house and made love after she locked up. Sunny encouraged Nina to voice her opinions and told her not to squander their time at the Jerome Gallery. Sunny encouraged Nina to quit procrastinating and get to the point, even if her tone had offended her. Nina said, I miss you, and I'm done missing you. She admitted that she had been shocked to learn of the massacre in Puerto Rico and had attempted to get Ava's assistance in setting up a meeting with him. Sunny didn't appear to care, pointing out that if she had heard about the incident, she would have known that everyone had survived. When Nana inquired about Dex's whereabouts, Sunny assured her that she should not worry. Nina disagreed, saying that just because Sunny issued her with divorce papers didn't mean that her love for him had changed. When Nina's gaze came to rest on his hand, she saw that he had taken off his wedding band. Nina was upset and questioned him about it, but he questioned why she was shocked given that it had served as a symbol of their broken trust and loyalty. Nina Hurt countered that it had vanished when they could say it with the same fervor and conviction that they had experienced when exchanging wedding rings. Sunny told her to sign the divorce papers, unmoved. Nina was adamant that she still loved Sunny and was positive that he felt the same way about her. Sunny claimed that while it had been business in his instance, it had been jealousy in Nina's, and she was sure he understood the true reason she had denounced Carly and drew to the SEC because she and he both lived by the maxim do unto others before they could do unto you. While he loved Carly as much as he loved Nina, he told her, and her actions had almost put Donna's mother in jail. Sunny claimed that Nina didn't care who went to jail as long as Carly was pleased. As long as Carly was miserable, it's a win-win situation for you, stated Sunny. While Nina was aware that Sunny held her accountable for severing Drew from Carly, she questioned whether Sunny had ever held Carly accountable for severing Nell and Willow from Nina. Nina acknowledged that it appeared as though she was the only one who was offended by it but Sunny countered that regardless of how many justifications men had, she had ultimately been careless and inconsiderate. And that's unacceptable, Sunny declared. Even though Carly hadn't wanted to hear from her, Nana said that she could have tried to let her know that Sunny had been in Nixon Falls. She also reminded him that she had never claimed to be a saint. Sunny claimed that Nina had despised Carly and had not told her. Although Nina didn't refute it, she told him that she had developed feelings for him. She acknowledged that it had caught her off guard, that she wasn't jealous. Nanan explained that the love they had discovered at Nixon Falls had outlasted hatred and envy, but Sonny was not persuaded. Even with Carly, she was positive he had never experienced that type of love before. Nana said, I've never experienced that kind of love. It felt like a stab in the back when Nina had lied to him after he had forgiven her for Nixon Falls, Sonny admitted. But he hadn't stopped loving her. Though Nina acknowledged that she shouldn't have kept him apart from his family, she and Sonny would never have fallen in love 
and started a life together if it weren't for that terrible choice. Knowing that it had been wrong of her to report Carly and Drew, and to lie to Sonny, she implied that it might happen again. But as long as she and Sonny were together, she thought she could make those things right. He could count on Nina to do everything in her power to give it another go. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.